Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Good morning, Good Shepherd. Good morning. It's another day that we come to give God praise. How many of you know you love the call on the name of Jesus? Anybody love the call on the name of Jesus? Yes. Song says this here. We love to yes. call your name. Oh! 
Jesus is that name. When I call your name. Say Jesus, Jesus is that name. When I call your name. Oh, no name greater than him. When I call your name. I said no name greater than him. When I call your name. Everybody praise him. Everybody give him glory. Call on the name of Jesus. He's been given a name that's greater and above every name. Jesus is his name. Everything you need resides is in the name. Oh, whoa. When I call, say, what's there is shall not remain. Oh, facts can change. I don't care what the diagnosis is. It can change at the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Petersburg Food Distribution will be here at Good Shepherd Baptist Church on Wednesday, August 18th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. All of our previous distributions have been huge successes, and we have you to thank. Volunteers are asked to sign up once again at chesterfieldfoodbank.org. Volunteers are asked to arrive at 330 each distribution has provided food for hundreds of families, and we are asking you to continue this at our next distribution. With your help and our partners, Chesterfield Food Bank and Communities in School Petersburg, we ask that you continue to be a blessing. That's the next Petersburg Food Distribution here at Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road on Wednesday, August 18th. God bless you. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, in association with East Coast Rider Bikers and Social Affiliates, invites all motorcycle riders for fellowship at our next Park and Parade, Sunday, August 15th, beginning at 10 a.m. As always, we will praise and worship by way of this in-car worship experience. Please plan to arrive by 9.45 a.m. You may listen via the sound system or by crystal clear audio from your FM radio. Park and Praise, with a special invitation to motorcycle riders, Sunday, August 15th at 10 a.m.
we were taught a song that says, yes, Jesus loves me, but the Bible tells us so. If we were by ourselves, I think we will return our response to him by saying this, I love you. I love you. Forever. Forever. With all my heart. With all my heart. together corporately and worship together lift your voice everybody say I love you I'll praise you 
forever, forever, Lord, for you are my King forever. Forever, you're my King. Now bow down and worship the King. Worship our King. Give him the glory due his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. Mighty and excellent is our God. Forever you're my king. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our worship. And God, we pray you receive our praise today. You get all the glory. Honor be thine. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Forever you are our king. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ, the first and last. No man works like you. So that's why it's so easy to worship you. It's so easy to praise you. We love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are our King, our Savior, our Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Good morning, Good Shepherd. God bless all of you. Thank you again for tuning in to our virtual worship service. I started to say our radio and TV broadcast, like I used to say uh, back in the day. But again, thank you for joining us virtually as we worship the Lord this morning. We thank God for our praise team who has ministered to us in song this morning. And uh, we are excited about continuing our sermonic series for the summer entitled the picking up where we left off if you would bow your heads and pray with me father in jesus name again we thank you O oh god for this day we thank you lord for what it will mean for all of us we are grateful for our time together today as we center our attention now around your word our ears are attentive our hearts are open to receive whatever it is that the Spirit may deposit within us today. I ask, O oh God, that you would consecrate me now afresh to your service by the power of your grace divine. And let my soul look up with a steadfast hope. And may my will be lost in thine. Lord, I thank you in advance for all that you're going to say and do through your servant. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. We want to, with this next installment of this sermonic series, we want to invite your attention uh, to another familiar passage that is found in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. And we want to read verses 14 through 21 uh, from the New Living Translation. However, we want to uh, center our attention if we can, on verse number uh, 16. The passage reads this way. It says, when I think of all of this, I fall uh, to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. And then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Again in verse 16 it says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. 
I want to talk for a few moments this morning about strengthening the core. Strengthening the core. Uh, I am sure that most of you, if not all of you, have engaged in some form of exercise over the course of your life. If you're like me, um, you've even had a trainer a time or two in, uh, in your um, exercise pursuits. And I have had one. One of the things that the trainer would always tell me is that I must learn how to strengthen my core. And we want to talk about that this morning, about what it really means spiritually to strengthen the core. I have made it an acronym in my little mind, and I have been uh, labeled, as it were, the core, C-O-R-E, as the, as the capacity to overcome resistance effectively. And this really ties into us children learning how to move forward with our spiritual development. Sometimes moving forward with our spiritual development means that we are going to have to pick up where we left off. We pick up where we left off, listen, number one, by getting up, number two, by moving forward, and number three, by becoming better. The first two we have established in previous messages about the importance of getting up, the whole idea of moving forward today we want to talk about strengthening the core in an attempt to become better, to learn and to gain a greater capacity to overcome resistance effectively. The Apostle Paul says here in the text of the church at Ephesus, he says that his prayer is that God from his glorious unlimited resources will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Let me ask a question before I go forward this morning to all of us. And the question is simply this, what areas in your spiritual development have become neglected? What areas in your spiritual development have you neglected? I mean, sometimes we neglect our spiritual development over time. It is not intentional. It happens, life happens. Um, sometimes our days filled with addressing emergencies and sometimes we leave neglected those things that are important. Sometimes we neglect our spiritual development because we we simply become weary even though we were doing well. Doing well over time uh, can take a toll on you. Uh, doing well, reaching a certain level repeatedly over time can cause one to grow weary and to get tired. For some of us, we have neglected our spiritual development because other interests and other activities started to consume more of our time. May I suggest to you that Paul talks about this in the text. I'm not going to try to keep you long this morning again but but there are there are four requests literally in Paul's prayer I reference verse 16 but it goes beyond that into verses uh, 17 18 and 19 as well uh, and I have to say to you that these four requests uh, are not to be looked at as isolated individual uh, requests or petitions in fact when Paul talks about them, you tend to understand that one actually leads to another. First of all, he says that he's praying that, that on the inside that you and I will have spiritual strength. He is praying that that spiritual strength will in turn lead to a deeper experience with Christ. Number three that that deeper experience with Christ will enable us to apprehend or to get a hold of how much God loves us. And he says, getting a hold of God's great love for us. His prayers that it will result 
and us being filled with all the fullness of God. Can I say that one more time? He is praying for strength, for depth, for apprehension, and fullness. Let, let's talk about these four requests because they are important for us as believers in strengthening our core. He prays for strength. All of these have to do, again, with the Holy Spirit. May I suggest to you that it's one thing to have the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. But what Paul is praying for is that we would have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May I suggest to you that we remember now back in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 where Jesus said these words. He says, ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. May, may I help you today and tell you that the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life will not be present without power. If you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, you will have power. Can I tell you that it is this power, the power of the Holy Spirit. It was this power in which Jesus performed his ministry on earth. The Bible tells us, amen, that uh, Jesus um, he came in the power of the Spirit. And I want to say to you, my friends, that's the only resource that we have today. Amen. As believers, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. It is interesting why so many shy away from the Holy Spirit. They want the presence, but they don't want the power. Well, you cannot separate the two. If you're going to be strengthened in your core, amen, in the inner a person, you're going to need not only the presence, but the power of the Holy Spirit. This is very important. Again, can I tell you that what Paul says, I'm praying that the power of the Holy Spirit will be given according to the riches of his glory. This is important. Amen. That the riches of his glory, that the intent of God's power amen, within us is for the glory of God, amen, the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to stress that now, amen, it's available. Can I tell you that when I was working out uh, with my trainer a few years ago, it really at that time helped my golf game. It was I would go and work out with him uh, early in the morning, and then I would go to the golf course and because we were doing exercises that strengthened my core, can I tell you that as my core got strengthened, my legs were stronger. And anybody who plays golf knows that the power is not in the swinging of your arms. It is in the strength that is in your legs. And because I was doing uh, exercises intended to strengthen my core, I was hitting the ball much, much far, far farther than I was before I was training and exercising. Here's what I'm trying to tell you, child of God. Amen. You have a capacity that you have not even tapped into yet. Amen. Your ability, amen, to live a life that pleases and glorifies God, amen, you have yet to scratch its surface. I'm telling you right now, amen, that if you allow your core to be strengthened, amen, listen, the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you is going to blow your mind. Here is the wonderful thing, amen, that the Apostle Paul uh, talks about when he talks about the power that is available for us to be placed on the inside, amen, <clears throat> the place where God works, amen, the inside, amen, that allows the person to become alive, amen, in Christ Jesus. I said on the inside, amen, the places where you are feeling. If you exercise the inner man, come on, I'm telling you, child of God, that even though the outward man is perishing, the inward man will be renewed day by day. That's all I'm trying to tell you that you need the power of the Holy Spirit. It creates within you the capacity, amen, to overcome resistance effectively. That is the only reason for power, can I tell you? It is the exercise, amen, or allowing the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit to exercise itself, come on, inside of us so that the life that we live in the world can bring glory and honor to God. I'm going to say this and I'll let you go. 
amen, that, listen, it is this power on the inside of us, amen, that enables us to succeed. So what does it mean, then, child of God, for us to have the Holy Spirit to empower us on the inside? It means, listen, that our spiritual faculties are controlled by God. It means that we are exercising, come on them, and growing in the word of God. It means that we are yielding to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to give us direction so that we can succeed, come on again, in living a life to the glory and honor of God's name. I'm telling you one more time, amen. This is what Paul says. He says, I'm praying, amen, that you will be strengthened on the inside, amen, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you'll have that inner strength, Amen. And can I tell you, this is what leads Paul at the end of the passage to say, now all glory to God who was able through his mighty power at work within us. I'm telling you, listen, I know you want, amen, the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with you, but you need the power of the Holy Spirit to work inside of you. Amen. Glory is given to God. Amen. Because of the mighty power that's at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. We need to be strengthened in our core. Here's where I want to go with this, and I'm going to let you go for the morning. I mean, we're talking about picking up where we left off. We're talking about getting up. We're talking about moving forward. But more importantly, we're talking about becoming better. What's the point of getting up, amen, and moving forward and, and not becoming any better? May I suggest to you that I heard someone quote another person recently, and they said that we are not human beings. We are humans becoming. We are, we are becoming more than we were yesterday. We are, we are becoming better tomorrow than we are today. And I'm telling you that the only way that can happen, you got to get strengthened in your core. <clears throat> Anybody who will tell you that has lived any length of time, they will tell you without exercise, come on, amen, one will experience weakness and atrophy of the limbs and muscles. You, you got to move around, amen. And, and what I mean by that is spiritually, on the, like, like we move around and exercise on the outside, Amen. You got to allow the Lord to feel at home inside of you. Give him room to move around and exercise. Amen. I wish I had a witness here and strengthen you. Amen. For amen. What is coming down the pike? Because there's going to be some resistance. But guess what? The power of the Holy Spirit inside of you will enable you to overcome that resistance effectively. Why? Because you are strengthened in your spiritual core. Oh, I got to tell you, sometimes you see people, amen, looking like Popeye, they got, and Pluto, they got muscles everywhere, amen. But can I tell you, i never forget it, that, <clears throat> that there were uh, two guys I went to school with. One guy, he was an exercise buff, and he lifted weights, and, and he, uh, uh, he thought he was the strongest uh, uh, guy in the world. But there was another guy uh, that uh, didn't work out. He just had natural strength. He, he was a solid fella, but he didn't have those big muscles like the other guy. And they got to talking about how one would beat the other. And the guy with the big muscles, he thought he was going to do it. He thought he was going to beat the one who was solidly strong. Amen. Didn't have big muscles on the outside, but he was strong on the inside. And they got the tussling. Uh, you already know how the story ends. They got the tussling. And it was not the gentleman that had the big muscles on the outside. It was the, the fella that was strong and solid on the inside. He had a strong core. He just picked that fella up, threw him to the ground. I don't even want to talk about it. It was ugly. I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that you want to be strengthened on the outside. See, the devil, amen, he's looking at you. And can I tell you that he is fooled by your appearance? 
appearances and he, he don't look like much on the outside, but he doesn't know that your secret weapon is not on the outside, it's on the inside. It is the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. You have been strengthened in your core and because of it, you have the capacity to overcome resistance effectively. So much so, amen, that that powerful Holy Spirit, amen, will cause you to live a life that will redound to the praise of God's name. Listen, can I tell you that the presence of the Holy Spirit is evidence of your salvation, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit that enables you for service, and it leads, when we come to verse number 20, amen, into a praise for the Holy Spirit. Why? Because, amen, the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of you has caused you to live a life where you're able to exceed your own expectations. But now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's at work in him, unto him be glory in the church. Can I tell you that right now, because you are strengthened at the core, you are able, praise the Lord, to do things that you didn't think were possible. Amen. The powerful presence of the Holy Spirit, amen, is exceeding your expectations. Thank God. Thank God. That's why we give glory to God. Amen. Listen, give glory to God for your success. Amen. Other, others thought you would fail, but God gave you the victory. Give glory to God. People thought you would falter along the way and, and that you weren't going to, to make it. Amen. But I'm, you are going to succumb to your circumstances. But, but thank God, amen, your core was strengthened. I wish I had a witness. I mean, the wind was blowing, but it couldn't knock you off your feet. I'm talking about danger was looming and lurking around you. I'm talking about the fact that the enemy was on your trail. I'm talking about you ran into a disappointment and you got some bad news and your world was turned upside down but you made it through it why because you are strengthened at the core you were able to get up you were able to move forward and even in the midst of it amen what people did not expect is that you became better in the midst of it all why because you were strengthened at the core that's what I'm trying to tell you learn to strengthen your core we'll talk about this a little more, but you got to learn, listen, to allow God to work on you on the inside because stuff going to happen. Amen. But we give praise and thanks to God. Amen. Because of his mighty power. <laughs> because you were strengthened at the core. God was able to accomplish infinitely more than we thought was possible. So we give glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. And if I was really preaching this this morning and not teaching it, I would park right here tell you about the glory that we ought to give God in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. It's Jesus all day. It's God in the morning it's the Lord in the evening. Come on, it's Jesus at night. Give him glory and thank him in the midst of everything that you're going through. And you know you didn't do it on your own. You did it because, not, not simply the presence of the Holy Spirit that was with you, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit that was working inside of you. Because you were strengthened at the core, you were able to succeed. That's my prayer for us this morning. We will allow the Lord to strengthen our core so that we can be effective in overcoming resistance. As I close this morning, I'm reminded of a story of a, a couple that had a child and he was slow learning to walk. They were concerned and they took him to the doctor to find out what was wrong. And they found out that, uh, that his muscles were undeveloped and they could not understand why. They, they asked the doctor, this is 
something genetic? Is it something hereditary? And the doctor said, no. He said, no, his muscles are underdeveloped because you carry them too much. He had never been sat on the floor. Every time he cried, they picked him up, they carried him around, and his muscles never developed. At the core, they never developed. And so he had to go to therapy. They had to take the little baby to therapy, and they had to sit him on a ball. And, and, and listen, in a couple of weeks, come on, of exercising, even the core of that little baby, he was walking in no time. Oh, you better hear me, child of God. You better work and allow the Lord to work inside of you. Amen. So that you can develop, so you can get up, you can move forward, and more importantly, so that you can become better. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. We pray that every heart will receive it in Jesus' name. And that we will learn, Lord, to not neglect our spiritual development. We know that we are spiritual creatures. Sometimes we tend to spend more time developing ourselves physically, mentally, and in other ways, and not spiritually. I pray, God, that we will overcome that apathy and we will go to work now. We will go to our spiritual gyms. We will get into our prayer classes. We will go into the Word and we will uh, intentionally be uh, that we will be intentional about uh, developing our devotional life so that we can become strengthened in our core. I thank you, Lord, that we're going to receive this word today in this, in this manner and that we're not just going to get up. We're not just going to make steps forward. When we look at our lives, we want to see that we are becoming better. In fact, so much so that it's going to exceed our imaginations, our expectations. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has yet to enter the hearts of men, the wonderful things that you have in store for them that love you. And it is now being revealed by your spirit, not just the presence, but by the power of your Holy Spirit. And it is so now, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends. We invite you to surrender your life to Christ this morning. Amen. If you need help with that, please reach out to us on our social media platforms. You can contact us on our website at www.goodshepherdbaptist.org, and we will respond to you, and uh, we will assist you if you will allow us uh, in leading you to Christ. We also ask that you would consider, amen, partnering with us and becoming a member, if you can, of the Good Shepherd Baptist Church family. Uh, we, you may not even live in the area, but you certainly uh, can have membership here. You can partner with this congregation, amen, uh, and you can do so virtually. If you believe this is the place, this is the ministry, amen, that the Holy Spirit wants to plant in you, we welcome you, my friend, amen, into the family of God called Good Shepherd. Please let us know, again, on our social media platforms. You can do it at our website. Uh, you can go, again, to our app. And, uh, and you can uh, connect with us, and we promise you that we will reach back out to you. Amen. And we will uh, do our best to get you integrated into life and worship here at Good Shepherd. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. We serve a great God. Everybody help me say the greatness of the Lord. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. inconceivable. The love that He shows, the love that he shows is unconditional. Is
deserves a great praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Oh, he's a great God. He's a great God. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.